So how did they slay the dragon? They created opposites. What opposites did they create? They turned your colors against yourself. They turned the deepest part of your psyche against yourself. They turned the red and the blue against yourself. The order was consistently the same. Blue, purple, red from right to left as with Hebrew. So we used to, you know, see clearly. Right to left, blue, purple, red. Blue, purple, and red, scarlet, bright red, woven through the tabernacle from its coverings and curtain to the garments of the high priest. You know what they did, my naga? Hey, go ahead and uh, go in your browser and put in blue, purple, red. Just put in blue, purple, red and look at the abomination that pops up. Oh, you see these... You see these colorful flags, right? But watch this, man. That flag is representing the bi... It's now representing the bisexual pride flag. Ain't that some shit? We know that this homosexual situation has hijacked the rainbow. The beautiful rainbow that Hawa said I'll put in the sky as a covenant between us that I ain't gonna flood this world no more. That's supposed to be our covenant. We see all the, the light, the colors, the spectrum. That's the Inca indigenous flow. The Inca flow has now been hijacked by the gay community. And now the gay community, or sorry, the bisexual community <laughs> has now hijacked the what? The blue, purple, and red. Ain't that some shit? Oh, now they got their own... Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Symbolic meaning for these colors. They say uh, the blue represents sexual attraction to the opposite sex only, straight. And then the purple represents sexual attraction to both sexual attractions to both sexes. Oh, God. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. Come on, man. This is our tabernacle, you know, biblical tabernacle flow. You know what I'm saying? This is our Hebrew priesthood, high priest flow. So let's get back on uh, on code. They can't hijack our colors, my naga. We know that when we put our flow together, it has a different meaning. This purple doesn't mean nothing sexual, right? It means everything royal, everything regal. What? Purple is the joining, my naga. The combining of the blue and the red. Uh, we're talking about the reconciliation. Don't we need reconciliation in the hood between blue and red? And whether you bang this or bang that or this click or that click or this, that, hey, it's all a derivative of what popped off with the creation of opposites with the blue managa and the red managa. How can you ever be in your tent of meaning if you never meet? This order was consistently the same. Blue, purple, red. From right to left. Blue is the color of the sky. The heavens represents the heavenly realm. And Hawa, so it is also listed as first priority. Now some would say that blue represents the divine masculine. And the red represents the divine feminine. And others would say the red represents Adam. The blood, the blood shed, the sacrifice of you, not no Messiah. This your sacrifice, Managa. You were sacrificed. But we know that this purple is depicting royalty. So how can you ever have royalty if the red and the blue is fighting against each other? Republican, Democrat, both sides of the street. You can never come into a into a what? You can never come into a reconciliation, a joining. You can never come into a high makin. Managa, because that makin, that mak, is the mak, is the makir, is the tau. The makir is the mark. 
The mark is the sign, and the sign is the last letter of the Hebrew. The tau is the mark, is the mac, is your place of meeting, two cross sticks meeting. That's your tent of meeting, is your ha mac, my nag. Mac is your meeting place. Ha is the breath, the highest breath. You're talking about the high priest, ain't you? <laughs> Amen. All the women that were wise spun with their hands and brought that which they had spun of blue, purple, red, fine white linen. Purity, right? Purity, right? Let's go, man. Let's go. So we know we're talking about the royals. We know we're coming together, but they stopped us from coming together. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine if the blue didn't see red as the enemy or the opposite and the red didn't see blue as the enemy or the opposite? Can you imagine if we could come together to get to the crown? Not their phony Corona tenderoni. I'm talking about the Corona crown, purple, third eye chakra, crown chakra, my noggin. You can't get to that place of joining within yourself if you don't reconcile your brotherhood, your sisterhood. They put these against each other to create what? Opposites. To slay the dragon, this is from blackdragon.com. Slay the dragon, love to miss D in the copper color. Originally dropped this on us. The only act of the product, the only the act of the product of Conientio. The coming together of opposites can slay the alchemical dragon. Slay the dragon. Slay the dragon by the coming together of opposites. Read it, my nugget. Activate my knock. Vibrate my knock. So you're telling me the only way that they can slay us, slay us. Who's the dragon? Who's the dragon, my knock? Come on, man. $64 million question to all my nagas. Uh... Who's the dragon? Who wrote the dictionary in 1828? Who wrote the Noah Webster dictionary in 1828? Oh, the hijack that was slaying the dragon. So the dragon slayer wrote the 1828 Noah Webster dictionary. And what did they put as a definition? Because we know, you know, dragon, they say, is serpent. Is the dragon a serpent? Is a naga a serpent? Or is a naga a snake? Oh, hijack city. You can't hijack us no more. Because we see clearly 360 degree dragon. Let us Let's go, man. Look at them. Look at them trying to work. Look at them. Let go. We gotta get into this dictionary another way, man. They trying to block. They trying to block our dictionary, man. Let's get it. But well, it's good, man. It's a good little detour, man. Cause we also need to know what's in America. Originally applied to the Aboriginal or copper color races found here. Found here by the European. Mm. So these copper color cons were found here. And what became another term for them? Because when you were found here, When they just found you here, you did something, man. You did something called fighting back. And when you fall back, 
they started to consider you um, dragons. You know what I'm saying? When you fall back, my naga, they started considering you dragons. And you can't be the serpent, right? You can't be the serpent because in alchemy, there's a dragon and a serpent. We'll get it. We'll get it. The shooting meteor is the prester, right? The meteor is the prester. I mean, my wave surfers know that's you too. Specifically, they got a fierce or violent person, male or female. Yes, the person they found here, the American, the copper color, Naga, it was violent, is violent, is fierce towards them, male or female. <laughs> so all they were trying to tell you is that they just found you here. You're the American, you're the copper color Naga, and you were very violent towards them because you didn't want to give up your land. You were violent because you didn't want to get your children, you know, bashed on the rocks. You didn't want to, you know, get your wife, you know what I'm saying, stolen and raped. You know what I mean? You were violent, my naga. We were fierce. So they called us dragons. Yeah, male or female, man or woman is a dragon. Right. So to slay the dragon... Right. They had to bring opposites together. Or at least make us think that those colors are opposite when these are the priesthood high vibrational flow. Now, again, this is alchemy, man. So, you know, you got your alchemical salamander, caduceus, all about mercury, right? All about thought, right? Specifically, the serpent is about thought because it's the impersonal. The cosmic dragon, right? The cosmic serpent. The unconscious as it burst into consciousness. It is impersonal and unconscious. And it also brings everything to life. But also kills everything. That's the serpent. That's the fox. That's the trickster. That's the mercury. That's the, you know what I'm saying? Sign of Cephali. Dog-headedness, my noggin. So the serpent cannot be the dragon. They're two separate things. So when people say that the Naga means serpent, they're getting close, but they're not all the way there. We're not talking about impersonal nature. We're talking about real personal nature. When you talk Drakkar, you're talking about the living spirit. It don't get no more natural than that. It's talking about the Ruach, my naga. It don't get no more natural than that. They call it philosophical quicksilver because they have to start being philosophical to explain what a dragon is. Because just like they just found you here in the definition, it's unlike ordinary Mercury because it's unlike anything ordinary Thoth has ever seen before. In the Emerald Tablets, he can't see past the greater light. He gets chased by the dragons or the hounds of the barrier. Emerald tablet. <laughs> I mean, he gets chased by the hounds of the barrier. So it's unlike ordinary mercury. It's the mysterious substance of unknown origin. It's the divine water and the divine power. It's the living spirit that's being extracted. That's the dragon. It's a mystery to them. The serpent is not a mystery. It's impersonal, unconscious, bursting into consciousness. They know exactly what this is with the act of conientio, the bringing together of opposites. So the serpent, through this opposite uh, attraction, right? This serpent, through the opposites, is slaying the dragon. The serpent slays the dragon. Hmm. So if the dragon is unlike ordinary mercury, that means that mercury is the one slaying the dragon through the coming together of opposites. And how do they do that? Well, they take your colors, you know, and they make you kill each other over them.
so that you never join together to get your purple flow, your crown. You never come together, my nigga. You never come together in the order blue, purple, red, right to left. You never come together to get your royalty. We never come together. Exodus 39 in the blue, purple, and red. They made clothes. Cloths of service to do service in the holy place. And made the garments for Aaron as Mo, as Hawah has commanded Moshe. It's supposed to have that gold trim around that blue, purple, red with that fine white linen. What happened? The blue and the red stopped coming together, huh? Somebody created opposites, man. Love to all y'all leaving beautiful comments, man. Love to Robert Cardi. <coughs> he said, greetings, inner peace. Purple was the original color of Mother Nature. Purple rain, like that Prince joint, man. Rest in power. Uh, the symbol, man, Prince. You know what I'm saying? Purple rain also can be R-E-I-G-N, right? The rain, the royal, the purple rain. Wow. So Prince had to drop purple rain, purple rain. He was talking about that regal Naga frequency, man. Purple also represents our crown chakra. All right. That's that 432 hertz connecting us to the ether realms and higher self. Blue represents divine masculine. Red represents divine feminine energy converging together as one source. Some would also say the red is the Adam. You know what I'm saying? The, the blood, the Adam. You dig the red? You feel me? So you bring them together to get the what? The purple man. The crown chakra. Let's go. Robert Cardi, Ahab, Sherry Graham said blueberries, juice, stains, fabric, purple, and is indigenous to America also. We're talking about alternatives to the snail, you know what I mean? But we're still digging on that indigenous American snail. Why are we digging on the snail? I'll show y'all in a second. I had a remembrance of a room with these colors at the middle of the floor bubbling up with oil, same colors. And here I am listening and digesting the truth of it. Wow. Love to Princess Hehuda. Let go. Love to Sam. Awesome messages. All praise the most high. Shout out. Wow. Ahab. Sam. Always representing. Always supporting. Sheep. Sheep. Secret. G. What's, up, what's going on, Drop? Just wanted to comment on the snail drop. What's going on with the snail drop, right? <laughs> I think the snail name in America is known as the Hexaplex Trunculis. All right, love to sheep, sheep, sleep, sheep. Love to Mac, Mac. I mean, hey, we're, we're bringing these royal colors together right quick, man. Let's just dig on the snail thing for a business, you know, for a minute. I didn't bring up snail, just in case y'all wondering. I didn't bring it up. Drop didn't bring it up. The Talmud describes the source of the blue dye, a snail known as the killer's own, right? So we're talking about how they're getting this dye. So this article led us to the killer's own, which leads us to the Middle East. And we said, okay, it's kind of a setup. Is there another title or name for an indigenous snail that we could be getting our purple dye or blue dye? Right here in the Americas, and this is where we busted them out. This is where we busted them out because they keep trying to throw us on the loop to this kill his own business in the Middle East, right? Check it out. You know, we were digging on this site, imaginemexico.com. The color purple naturally comes from snails. The color purple in Mexico is produced in the manner today and used in the country's traditional textile industry. So today, in Mexico, they popping off with the color purple, the dye from the snail naturally in Mexico as it was done indigenously, indigenously, my nigga. For centuries and countries and societies all around the world, the color purple has been related to royalty, power, and wealth. That was because the rarity and cost of the dye originally used to produce it. All right, a dye that's found naturally only in snails purple is royal all right so in europe 
Only the royals could wear purple. Now, they say the purple dye was obtained from snails that lived in the Mediterranean. And we said, dodge your own hijack. Stop trying to take it to the Middle East. Left a little moray, man. He just popped off a great drop on that. Go check out Chief Moray, my knock. <laughs> when the Spanish arrived in the Americas, they were impressed by the wide use of the color purple and the fabrics of the indigenous people. Hey, we about to pop off because this is about to be a body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. So they were impressed in the Americas that the indigenous people were rocking the fabrics of purple. They were impressed by the wide, wide use, not a little use, the wide use of the color purple. And you, all my old heads know that movie, that Whoopi Goldberg movie, The Color Purple, right? Uh oh. <laughs> indigenous people. Uh oh. The indigenous American people obtained the dye from snails in the Pacific, but they did not kill the snails as the Europeans did. They ex extracted the dye with yarn and returned the snails to the sea. So they weren't killing off the snails. This wasn't no killer, kill dye, kill snail dye. This, you know, they were naturally preserving the snails. The people allowed the snails to rest during the reproductive cycles to conserve the species. This is a natural way. In Europe, snails were killed to obtain their purple dye. In the Americas, indigenous people extracted their liquid dye with yarn and returned the cells to the sea to conserve the species. Here's the body bag. This is how you know that these indigenous people that were already rocking the royal purple with their indigenous snails. They didn't have to go to the Mediterranean. They were already here. <laughs> and here's the thing about the Levitical diet, you know, not eating seafood and stuff, bottom feeders, is that these people were not eating the snails. They were doing what? Returning the snails to the sea. This lets you know that these indigenous Nagas, these indigenous Nagas were keeping the cold. They still had remnants of the cold. They weren't taking the snails and eating them. They were returning them to the sea, my God. They were not eating the escargot, right? <laughs> Whatever that is. They were not eating all this all this hijack abominations, my God. They were returning it to the sea. And they were using the dye. Now, can you use the dye of a so-called unclean animal? Well, you know, love to Jackie Anthony. We're, gonna, we're about to get that comment, but... She asked that question, you know, uh, is there like another way to get it that's not unclean? When you say unclean foods, you're speaking directly about foods. You know what I'm saying? These are foods that you should not digest. It does not mean that uh, you can't use different things for other purposes. You can't use a snail for other purposes because it's unclean to eat. doesn't make it unclean to use as a dye or to extract extract what Hawa has put naturally as a as a dye, you know what I'm saying, or um, these type of uses specifically for these type of reasons. But an unclean food doesn't mean, oh, I can't I can't touch it. You know what I'm saying? It's just a I mean, I, does that mean that um you know uh, catfish? You know, because it's an unclean fish, you know what I'm saying, is uh, some type of, uh, you know, devil fish, you know what I'm saying, or does it have a purpose, you know what I'm saying? You know, different things have purposes, you know, that we don't use. Some people use urine, urine for dye. You know, we just read about that, that they were using urine for dye to kind of, you know, recycle things and all that in the Mayan culture and, you know, different things. So, you know, does now urine would be unclean to drink. But does it mean you can't make a dye out of it? I don't, you know what I mean? So don't extend the unclean food thing to everything, making it unclean to touch, use as for any purpose. Unclean food means unclean to eat and digest for you and your body. You dig? <laughs> All right. Unclean does not mean a devil or, you know, uh, evil snail. You know, it just means you shouldn't eat it, but it doesn't mean that it's evil. You can't use it to make your purple dye. All right, that's all I'm saying. We didn't eat them, though. We returned them to the sea, my nigga. And that's pretty special. And you can kind of see how they're 
getting down with it right here, you know what I mean? Just milking and boxing on this dye business, you know what I'm saying? They're just extracting it using the yarn, my knock. It's another site backing up, you know, all this indigenous dye business to Mexico. You can check it out right here, pbs.org. I'll leave you the link, you know what I'm saying? But it's breaking down this indigenous flow with the snail business. So don't try to tell us just to check for one title of a snail, and that's going to take us to the Middle East. You know, dodge your own high chest. We got indigenous snails, my neck. We popping off. Let's get a couple more comments, man. Man, love to Mac Mac. He said, in the islands in St. Lucia, we have two regal Creole flower festivals with these same official colors. Primary focus is on royalty with their own folk songs, clothing, priests, military crowns, scepters, golden ball, and cross on top, etc. Though I believe it had a little to do with Christianity, as most Christian churches were very against them. I couldn't understand why. As except for a few alcoholics, they weren't as vulgar as our carnival. They seemed to just be a reenactment of time past to educate the young to their royal heritage, man. So it's a great comment here, man. Dig on the whole joint. But, you know, we're just talking about the Regals, man. Love to uh, the Trini family. Oh, care what they do. Hey, man. He said, uh, fellow Islander here, many of these things seem to be interwoven in our Caribbean culture. Jackie Anthony, what it do? She said Leviticus 11. She's talking about the unclean snails. Canaanites use snails. Aboriginal American copper color races use plants such as Calicarpus Americana for purple dye. Seems reasonable not to use an unclean animal like a snail. And I'm like, okay, well, is it unclean to eat or does it mean that we can't use it for any purpose? But I definitely, you know, can dig on using the plants. And we got to dig on that further. Love to Jackie Anthony. Dracon said, Dracon in the building shop. I tell much of how would it do? And all the family checking in. Almighty died. I was just thinking about getting a garment and other appropriate adornment. As always, you are right on time. Thank you. Love to Almighty Die. Hawa, Hawa. M. Blue and red make purple. The purple is the color of spiritual things. Purple, third eye, chakra. Beautiful flow, Katari, what it do? Desmond Williams, man, it's a great drop right here. Platonic solid colors, purple, scarlet, dodecahedron. Now, I had it written down, man, you know, to get back in this dodecahedron, you know what I mean? Platonic solids love to, you know, uh, Templar Irvin Reed right on time, man. <coughs> so, let's check it out. It says red. Equals the tetrahedron, blue the isa, the isosahedron, uh, gold copper is the hexahedron, fine twine, wine, emerald, uh, octahedron, okay, okay, or fine twin, wind, emerald, drop these are the royal colors, which are the platonic solid colors, in my opinion, even the sapphire, emerald stone. All the drop coming full circle. Love to, but bro, our bro Desmond Williams. One more man, love the tech, man. He said, um, I mean, <laughs> he loved the tech for real. Love to Irvin Reed. He said, just caught this after listening to multiple times. The caption you read almost sounds like an allegory of the alchemical serpent, alchemical dragon. That's what we just got. Also, note these snails are aboriginal to the Americas. America snails in production is off the Pacific. So did the purple cross the Pacific and Asia reaching Europe or did purple cross the Atlantic into Europe directly curious my gut bone is telling me Joseph's multicolor coat oh, that's major it's something we gotta look into for like it's the first time love the Templar and hey, we're gonna get on some do 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 decahedron drop and that uh multicolored Joseph's coat oh boy you already know that's gonna play Exogenesis says, purple rain, purple rain. I'm understanding. Thank you for your work. Praise to Hawaii. Love to Abiyya. She says, you don't get any notifications, man. You got to make sure you're checking your notifications. I don't really talk about it, but I assume the real ones is going to be over here checking in, man. Hey, that dodecahedron flow might definitely be something. We got to 
tap back into, man. I actually just put up a couple of links on the Dodecahedron. I mean, I'm going to leave these for you, but, you know, basically, man, look, <laughs> you got a combination of the elements, right? You got the tetrahedron, plasma, fire, all right? The earth cube, solid. The air, so you got the tetrahedron, fire. You got the cube, represents the earth. The, oct the octahedron represents the air or gas. And then you got the ether or the quintessence. Quintessence. Now, looking back in that Transformer movie, like uh, whatever one last night, you got Quintessa, who's supposed to be the mother, like of all these Transformers. She's called Quintessa, and you got Quintessence is the ether, my naga, or the dodecahedron, right? I mean, get back in that comment. What did he say? What the bro say about the dodecahedron drop? Yeah, look, Desmond said the purple represents the dodecahedron. So I said, okay, okay. So what does that mean? If the purple represents the dodecahedron, then what is the dodecahedron? <laughs> oh, something like that. We got 12 faces, 12 sides. I mean, basically, in definition, you're just talking about a 12-sided you know, equal, <coughs> equal, um, uh, equal length, equal area, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Equal size, equal size, 12 equal size. All right. So, but you got different levels to the dodecahedron game. I mean, it gets real complex to the amounts of dodecahedrons, but simply put, you know, these are like the love to Templar, you know what I mean? These are like the, you know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know what I'm saying? This is their dice on the Dungeons and Dragon dice. It's the Platonic Solids, literally. Dungeons and Dragons. So this is how you know you're dealing with dragons, <laughs> right? And they're slaying the alchemical dragon. Can you look at the Dungeons and Dragon dice? What do you get? <laughs> what do you get, man? Right? You get the Platonic Solids. So why on the Dungeons and Dragons dice do you get Platonic Solids? Because Platonic Solids are the Dracons. This is the same thing. So anybody thinking dragons are just some reptile situation. No, you're dealing with the fire. You're dealing with the water. right? You're dealing with the ether. The cube is the earth. The oct octahedron air. Tetrahedron fire. Isosahedron water. Dodecahedron is associated with the universe. This is from MathBitsNotebook.com and represents mystery. Well, didn't the uh, uh, mysterious uh, Quicksilver, mysterious alchemical dragon said mystery as well, right? Unknown origin. So the dragon is this dodecahedron all in one, my noggin. Plato stated that... The, that the dodecahedron is used for arranging the constellations on the whole heaven. The dodecahedron was used for arranging all the constellations on the whole heaven. Dodecahedron can be seen as representing the universe with the 12 zodiac signs, representing the 12 faces. Some say it also represents, represents the 12 gates. You got a whole breakdown in the whole Brahmin situation, the Indian Vedas as well as the Revelation situation with these 12 gates, you know what I mean, that you're supposed to be walking into in Revelation for the 12 tribes. 12 tribes, Zodiac, 12 gates, my noggin. We're talking about the crystallography and the mineralogy. You yourself to real pop it off, man. Primary water. I'm talking water, right? Fire, earth. So this is all the dragon, which is why you got the dungeons, and dragons connection, all right? And it's just a little, you know, quick intro into what we're about to go into with the dodecahedron way deeper, but you see how it all ties together, and it's very specific, and the more you look into it, remember back to that Dungeons and Dragon dice, right? <laughs> it gets deeper and deeper, especially when you dig on what Plato was saying. I mean, 
Just read all this in your spare time. Just read all this in your spare time. You're talking about the vapor. Uh, air again in flame becomes fire. And again, fire when condensed and extinguished passes once more into the form of air. And once more, air when collected and condensed produces cloud and mist. And from these, when still more compressed, comes flowing water. And from water comes earth and stones once more. And thus generation appears to be transmitted from one to the other in a circle. Circle of life. Circle of life, my nigga. Yeah, we're talking dodecahedrons, man. What's it got to do with the constellations? Zodiac signs, you know what I'm saying? What's it got to do with the 12 tribes, though? Huh? Oh, they want to get into time? What's it got to do with time, man? <laughs> I mean, these are questions. You're talking energy, frequency, and vibration. I'm going to leave the link, but we will be, you know... Uh, going down this beautiful path here, man, to really pull this ether together because the dodecahedron is the ether, my naga. We in the ether, man. We in the ether, man. We are in the ether. And it's a great drop from the sophietrust.org. You know, breaking down some good things, man, regarding the dodecahedron flow. And it said something really dope about the uh they had a nice little connection. Maybe we'll get it next time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It had that twelve gates. Man, that's a projection of the Pentagon, Plato considered the dodecahedron to be the culmination of the hierarchy hierarchy of five solids, alluding to a growth or development associated with the four elements plus ether. Thus, the dodecahedron contains all the other elements, framing as Tamas describes, one visible animal comprehending within itself all other animals. So all other animals are coming out of this dragon, this ether. All animals come from the dragon frequency, man. The ancient Kabbalists put it in terms of the dodecahedron, which lies concealed in the perfect cube, suggesting that the earthly body of the world contains within itself the archetypal cosmic design, which reveals itself, however, only to the eyes of one who understands the mysterious process. We're talking alchemy whereby the one becomes the many through divine geometry. So in other words, the dodecahedron represents the one, my God, the oneness, man. I mean, it's pretty, uh, you know, mind-blasting, man, to surf this wave. Twelve equal spheres may surround or touch not one other, but a nucleus of equal size. When this occurs, the form contracts so that each sphere touches its five neighbors completely, completing a threefold transformation referred to as the 12 degrees of freedom. The linear and turning movements required in this process thereby draw together the tetrahedron fire, octahedron air, isosahedron water, cube earth, into the dodecahedron containing all plus ether of the heavens. Alawa. The cosmic dance is fiery, yet it moves within a sphere, pulsating within with the drum of time around the center there. The radiant flames encircle the moon of Shiva brow and the mixed Mixtured glow intones the sacrificial vow. It gets deep. Mm hmm. You know, I just like to look at it in terms of uh, crystallization. 
<clears throat> so just looking at this thing, you know, just digging on it. It's all about the crystallization, man. And the crystallization happens whether you're talking about fire, the water, the air, definitely, you know, the earth. <laughs> you already know that. Yeah, some interesting dropping here about these 12 gates. I kind of saw it real quick this time. but uh, This is rather similar to the theme found in many cultures of the 12 fruits. Born on the tree of life or the 12 tribal progenitors. Okay. <laughs> so we ain't tripping, right? <laughs> we ain't tripping. When they talk about 12 gates in Revelation, right? He's calling them the gates of heaven. Bang, bang. So you got 12 gates in Revelations, but you also got 12 gates of heaven, right? <laughs> the zodiac itself was associated with a demurge and the primordial oros, eros, or the will to create. This is rather similar to the theme found in many cultures, 12 of the 12 fruits born of the tree of life, of the 12 tribes, right? The 12 divisions, though, through the sun seems to orbit, have been seen for millennia as corresponding to the 12 degrees or stages in the continuous action of the active principle upon passive. The cosmic creation within the division of 12 involves vital combinations of numbers such as twice plus twice five plus two and three times four it also involves deep and and breadth of action on three or more dimensions yielding the fifth and final of plato's regular silence the do decahedron just the symbolism of each sign of the zodiac springs from the number it bears in in the series of so the 12 pentagonal faces of the do decahedron express the point the line the plane in their totality, all the geometric solids. Thus, the dodecahedron, which Plato called the su supreme spiritual metaphor for the one and the many, is a paradigmat, paradigmat model to serve as an archetypal framework for every possible manifestation. So this dodecahedron represents every possible manifestation it represents the one it represents the ether there's something very mysterious about the dodecahedron or not <laughs> and john kepler said the highest and most good creator in the creations of this mobile world and the arrangements of the heavens and his eye on those five regular bodies which have been most celebrated from the time of pythagoras and plato right down to our own day and that to this nature, he accommodated the number of heavenly spheres, their proportions, and the system of their motion. Yeah. Is it a metaphor for the one? Is it a metaphor simply uh, dodecahedron, purple? And if they keep creating the opposites to separate the red from the blue, Manaka, can you ever get the purple? Will we ever be back in cold? We're talking botanic silence, energy, frequency, vibration. So it's deeper than that. When they separate the red and the blue, we don't get that do that dodecahedron. We don't get that power, my noggin. We ain't tapping in, man. We ain't tapping in to the universe, right? We ain't tapping in to a why. We ain't tapping in to the one, the totality, the supreme, the good creator, my naga. We just talking dodecahedron, man. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And definitely uh, dig on this link. 
and put the elements together, man. Put the elements together. Uh, we in the ether, my naga. We in the ether, my naga. Hey, man, we falling back, man. We about to get a nice uh, dismount. Matter of fact, let's just check out a minute of this spirit science for old times sake and what they said about the dodecahedron. Let go. Remember when we talked about male and female energy, lesson four? As you can see, this image is female. It has no straight lines. However, when you combine male lines with these female circles, something amazing happens. What you do is draw a straight line from the very center of every single circle to every other circle in this image. When you do this, you get an image which is known throughout the universe, everywhere, as Metatron's Cube. It is one of the most important informational systems in the universe, one of the basic creation patterns in existence. So what is Metatron's Cube? Well, anyone who has studied sacred geometry or- Is Metatron also Enoch? Let go. Even regular geometry, for that matter, knows that there are five unique shapes in the universe, and that they are crucial to understanding both regular and sacred geometry. They are called the platonic solids. A platonic solid has certain characteristics by definition. First of all, all of its faces are the same size. For example, a cube, the most well-known platonic solid, has a square on every face, so all of its faces are the same size. Secondly, the edges of the platonic solids are all the same length. All edges of the cube are the same length. Third, it only has one size of interior angles between the faces. In the case of the cube, this angle is 90 degrees. And fourth, when put inside of a sphere, all of the points will touch the edge of the sphere perfectly. With that definition, there are only four shapes besides the cube that fit that description. So what are they? Well, we have the dodecahedron, the tetrahedron, the octahedron, the isosahedron, and the hexahedron. All of these shapes are found within Metatron's cube. This knowledge is also where original alchemy came from. The ancient alchemists and great souls like Pythagoras, father of Greece, considered each shape to have an elemental aspect to them. The tetrahedron was considered fire, the cube was earth, the octahedron was air, the isosahedron was water, and the dodecahedron was ether. Ether, also known as prana, and tachyon energy are all the same thing. They extend anywhere and are accessible at any point in space, time, and dimension. This is the great secret of zero-point technology. The sphere is voidness. These six elements are the building blocks of the universe, and they create the qualities of the universe. To summarize, this is the first informational system that comes out of the fruit of life through Metatron's cube. In alchemy, they rarely discussed ether. I've read that in the Pythagorean school, if you even uttered the word dodecahedron outside of the school, they would kill you on the spot. Damn. You can't even... Speak the word dodecahedron. So when we talk about getting back to the purple, my naga, putting the red and the blue, it's for everything. We're playing for everything. We're coming back into the tent of meeting. And when you meet, you pop off with full prana, energy, chi, ki, ka, draka, ka. <laughs> it's very serious business. That's how sacred this shape was. 200 years later, when Plato was alive, he would discuss it, but only very carefully. This is because the dodecahedron is near the outer edge in your energy field and is the highest form of consciousness. There's quite a bit more mm. here, but I don't think I can go much further on it right now. <laughs> There's quite a bit more, but I don't think I can go much further. It's all right, uh, spirit science dude. We're going to get it, man. Right now, man, we're going to get a dismount. Fall back, man. I'm going to play a little clip of this uh, Survival Drop 101, you know, per the message for the tribe as we come together. We got that water. Drop Nation. Got that water. Hey, man, all praise the why, man. One tribe. One vibe. Survival Drop 101. Allow one. Allow one. Let's pop off, man. You already know Ma's about to start thinking out loud, so let me not take up too much time. Let's pop off, my nugget. Hey, man, Shabbat up. Hope everybody's kind enough, choosing the best path, the most righteous path. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's dodging the hijacks, dodging the murmuring, you know, dodging the wasted energy, and seeing everybody for what you want them to be, man. You got to see your brothers and sisters for what you want them to be. Start putting that positive energy on them. Stop breaking them down and dissecting them and trying to see what they're not. Look at them for what they, what you want them to be and crystallize them, man. Meditate on it. Meditate on making each other stronger. That's what we do when we really charge up. We know we need each other. We see a brother working on it. We see a sister working on it. They're working something out. They got something going. Help them. 
No longer we fighting against each other. No longer is the red against the blue. Red and blue is purple, and we got the crown or not. Amen. Survival drive. You got to keep the code to survive. You got to keep the code to survive. We are back in the U.S. Army Naval uh, Army Survival Manual. U.S. Army Survival Manual. And I'm going to drop it for you in the drop, drop, chatter. Chat, 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 chatter. Let go, man. I'm going to belly flop into... The survival planning and survival kits. I'm on uh, page 17. Let's go ahead and get it. Man, I hope your Shabbat was beautiful with all you're going through. Sometimes it's not so much how good you feel, but just being grateful, having gratitude that you are in a better position to take whatever you got to take. You know what I mean? We're all going through the tail end of this horrible storm we, we've all been in as a tribe. You know, everyone's been jammed up, so don't think you're the only one. Um, and just try to focus on the whole, the whole picture. When I, when I talk tribe, I'm not talking about the, the few people I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the tribe all across the plane that's waking up. I do it for y'all. I'm not, I don't do it for the few that I know. You know what I mean? I do it for the tribe. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I appreciate the ones that can, you know, zombie up in real time. You know what I'm saying? That, that's a, that's, that's Baruch to have tribe around you in real time, man. But what I do it for, man, I do it for you, my naga, all across the plane. When I talk tribe, I'm talking to the entire tribe. We got to keep our mind on the big picture, everything we do. Because so why? <laughs> it's nothing but the big picture. And I want to pick it up right here because we all feel a lot of anxiety right now. I mean, <laughs> it's just nothing but confusion after confusion after confusion, man. You got this Trump saying I'm president and Biden saying I'm president. And some people say, well, my president's Trump. Biden's stealing the thing. And then other people say, well, well Biden's my president. Trump's trying to steal it in the Supreme Court. And whoever wins it, someone's going to think well, it was stolen. I mean, I don't know if there's ever going to be a clear cut president. From this point on, <laughs> I think Trump might do his thing and Biden might do his thing, kind of like that uh, Confederate thing, you know what I mean? Hey, everything's repeating itself, man. Page 16, let's get it. Natural reactions. Man has been able to survive many shifts in his environment throughout the centuries. His ability to adapt physically and mentally to a changing world kept him alive while other species around him gradually died off. The same survival mechanisms that kept our forefathers alive can help keep us alive as well. However, these survival mechanisms that can help us can also work against us if we don't understand and anticipate their presence. It is not surprising that the average person will have some psychological effects in a survival situation. We will now examine some of the major internal reactions you and anyone with you might experience with the survival stressors addressed in the earlier paragraphs. Let's begin. Fear. Fear is our emotional response to danger circumstances that we believe have the potential to cause death, injury, or illness. This harm is not just limited to physical damage. The threat to one's emotional and mental well-being can generate fear as well. For the soldier trying to survive, fear can have a positive function if it encourages him to be cautious in situations where recklessness could result in injury. Unfortunately, fear can also immobilize a person. It can cause him to become so frightened that he fails to perform in activities essential for survival. Most soldiers will have some degree of fear when placed in unfamiliar surroundings under adverse conditions. There is no shame in this. Each soldier must train himself not to be overcome by his fears. Ideally, through realistic training, we can acquire the knowledge and skills needed to increase our confidence and thereby manage our fears. Anxiety. Associated with fear is anxiety because it is natural for us to be afraid. It is also natural for us to experience anxiety. Anxiety can be uneasy 
apprehensive feeling we get when faced with dangerous situations, mental, physical, and emotional. When used in a healthy way, anxiety urges us to act to end or at least master the dangers that threaten our existence. If we were never anxious, there would be little motivation to make changes in our lives. The soldier in a survival setting reduces his anxiety by performing those tasks that will ensure his coming through the ordeal alive. As he reduces his anxiety, the soldier is also bringing under control the source of that anxiety, his fears. In this form, anxiety is good. However, anxiety can also have a devastating impact. Anxiety can overwhelm a soldier to the point where he becomes easily confused and has difficulty thinking. Once this happens, it becomes more and more difficult for him to make good judgments and sound decisions. To survive, the soldier must learn techniques to calm his anxieties and keep them in the range where they can help, not hurt. Anger, frustration. So all these are not, <laughs> I mean, the world is a battlefield right now, but you really are in a frequency war. So when I give you survival drop, it's not just relevant to you being in the wilderness per se. Just know that you're, you're in the wilderness now. I mean, you know, even though you're in the city, we're all in the unknown, man. You know what I'm saying? So we have a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. And you're beginning your survival technique now. You're not learning this for later. Apply this today. Apply this right now, right now. You did. Learn the techniques to calm your anxieties and keep them in the range where they help, not hurt. If you being anxious about something does more hurt than some, you know, than, than, than good, than positive, you got to check that. You got to say, why are my anxieties causing this reaction? You might not want to deal with it. You might not admit that you're being anxious. You might not admit that you have fear. It's okay. But fear is a frequency and anxiety is a frequency. And you know what I'm saying? These frequencies can be picked up on and other people can vibe off of you. And they know when you're anxious and when you're moving in fear, even if you're in denial. <laughs> but when we're all honest, you know what I'm saying? We all know that we're in a battlefield and it's all okay. We all feel this every day. We all feel these things every day. It's how we manage them so that they do more help and not good to each other, to your brothers, to your sisters. You know what I'm saying? Don't pour that anxiety on them to the best of your ability. Don't pour the fear spell on them to the best of your ability. If anything, build them up, give them confidence. You know, if you're not giving me confidence, if you're giving me more anxiety, I'm going to tend to back up off, you know what I mean? Because it's a frequency war. I can't manage your anxieties and deal with my own, you know, issues. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just personally speaking. You know what I mean? You got to be able to manage your own anxieties so that you're not pouring them on your brothers and your sisters and your tribe members and, you know what I'm saying, your fan band. You know what I mean? Be careful how you are crystallizing each other. If you put a bunch of crystals on the table, you know what I'm saying, what frequencies are going to bounce off of which crystals, you know? Is this is this crystal going to have a positive effect or a negative effect? It depends on the intention. So you got to come back to your intentions and see the whole spectrum of light to the best of your ability. Pray to Hawa so you can see clearly 360 degrees, dragon flood eye, and charge each other up. If you don't have the ability to charge each other up, then at least have the respect to fall back, you know, fall back off each other and say, you know, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, drain you with my anxiety. Let me deal with this. Or, hey, here's how you can help me with this, baby. You know what I mean? But if it's a continual thing, your anxiety is playing a role all the time. You're always anxious. You're always complaining about something. something. You're always victimized. You're all, if you find yourself the victim a lot, you know what I'm saying? There's also an energy, like a spirit of, of victimization, man, that, you know, it's like you don't want to be victimized, but you do because you enjoy complaining about being a victim. If you've been doing this too long, that means you're in a victim loop. That's you, not the world. It's you. You got to get out of that victim loop because all this is part of your anxiety and your fear. Right now, you're at war. Not later in the wilderness. Right now, we got to survive. Right now, man, we're just trying to survive another day. This survival drop one-on-one, my knock. We got to pop off today. Let's go, man. Anger and frustration. Frustration arises when a person is continually thwarted in his attempts to reach a goal. 
to the goal of survival is to stay alive until you can reach help or until help can reach you. To achieve this goal, the soldier must complete some task with minimum resources. It is inevitable in trying to do these tasks that something will go wrong, that something will happen beyond the soldier's control. We think everything, you know what I'm saying, is out of control right now, right? It's beyond our control. Something's going wrong, right? We're feeling angry. Come on, man. Me too, we're feeling angry. We're feeling frustration. It's beyond our control. And that with one's life at stake, every mistake is magnified in terms of its importance. Everything we're doing is magnified. Everything that goes wrong feels magnified, right? Thus, sooner or later, soldiers will have to cope with frustration when the, with a the few of their plans run into trouble. Our outgrowth of this frustration is anger. All right, so the first thing we do when we get frustrated is lash out, right? We, we get angry. We get upset. There are many events in a survival situation that can frustrate or anger a soldier or a naga. <laughs> Getting lost, damaged, or forgotten equipment, the weather, inhospitable terrain, enemy patrols, physical limitations are just a few sources of frustration and anger. Frustration and anger encourage impulsive reactions, irrational behavior, poorly thought out decisions, and in some instances, an I quit attitude. Hey, man, if you like me, man, I mean, if people with the I quit attitude, ain't no way, you know what I'm saying, I can I can surf the wave too close with them, you know what I mean, because you know they're going to quit on something, you know what I'm saying, if you ain't in it, don't, don't, don't even come near this kitchen, don't even come near this fight, don't even come around us in a survival situation with an I quit attitude, you're going to bring the whole tribe down, again, back to the victimization. Can you imagine trying to exit this with somebody who's constantly complaining, constantly a victim? You know, oh, they're not listening to me. Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Such and such, such and such, this is this and that. That's an attitude problem. And you got other people with more problems than them, but they're not complaining about it. You know what I'm saying? They have a, they have a whole jam up there at work. They can still walk in the house with a smile and somebody say, hey, how's your day? They don't say, uh, Oh man, this happened today. And they just say, man, I had a good day, man. You know, this, you know, that, that, that. It's like, you know, those people, man, that don't, they don't get no thrill in complaining. They don't get no thrill in being a victim. So you don't hear about them being victimized like that because they don't complain about these situations and make themselves a victim. They don't enjoy that. They don't enjoy talking, you know, in a victim terminology, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a different attitude. And we all got to have an attitude adjustment before stuff really gets real, my nugget. You know what I'm saying? This is our point right now. Before we talk about buying land, you know, driving up this and that, it's time for attitude adjustments. It's time for frequency charge up. It's time to get to know yourself and to conquer whatever static you got, you know, and get that I quit attitude out the equation. Man, pet peeve is quitter ass noggers, you know what I'm saying? You don't want a quitter ass knock on the front lines with you, man. Period, you know, point blank. So, you know, we all got to charge up and make sure, you know what I'm saying, we're bringing the, the highest frequency. Again, those crystals are laid out. How are they going to charge each other up? The ones that ain't charging, they got to they gotta go. They can't be on the crystal bed if they ain't charging another crystal up. I mean, if they just draining and draining and I quit, I quit. I'm the victim, I'm the victim. This happened to me, this happened to me. This always happens to me, da 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 Oh, man, how you doing today? Oh, man, you know, you know, bro, you know how it is. You know, that draining ass energy, man. Get that shit away. Get it away. If you like that, then just be prepared to walk your own path. You ain't ready to drive up. Driving up ain't for everybody. Everybody ain't mature enough to do this. You know what I'm saying? Some people got a solo path. Some of Jacob's trouble is really Jacob's trouble. I mean, you know, Jacob is really popping off. You know what I mean? So, allow why this is what we got to be, you know, focused on. And um, this is our responsibility first. Before before we talk about tribing up in terms of physically being next to each other, 
we got to get the attitude adjustments all the way charged up, man. And it starts with getting rid of this I quit attitude. People sometimes avoid doing something they can't master. If the soldier can harmly, harmless or harness the proper, the proper channel, the emotional intensity associated with anger and frustration, he could productively act as he answers the challenges of survival. If the soldier does not properly focus his angry feelings, he can waste must waste much energy, man. And that's all I'm talking about. It's, it's a wasted energy. It's a wasted energy to, you know, have to constantly, you know, cycle back into the anger and frustration and the, you know, fear and anxiety. If you're in those loops, you're wasting your energy. And if you're bringing them to other people, you're now wasting their energy. And you might want to do good, but you're wasting people's energy because you can't harness your own anger, frustration, whatever it is, loneliness, uh, whatever you're anxious, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, whatever you're fearful about, you got to harness it. That's your, you know, these are the cards you've been done. Everyone got their own jam ups. Everybody, they, they, you got your thing, someone else is dealing with a whole nother thing, and your thing is not worse than their thing. You don't even know them. You don't even know their thing, right? So, tribing up, you, you can't bring this to each other. Cause you don't know what the next person got to do with too. They got to harness their own stuff. So you got to be able to harness this. And I'm talking in real time before the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? We have attitude adjustments that need to pop off immediately, man. Because as much Nagas talk about tribing up, Nagas is not ready to tribe up. Not without dealing with yourself, you ain't. You ain't ready to try about without dealing with yourself because you bring this around other people, you're going to cause all type of confusion. So again, anger and frustration and I quit attitude. People sometimes avoid doing something they can't master. It says irrational behavior, poorly thought out decisions. If a soldier can harness and properly channel the emotional intensity and association with associated with anger or frustration, he can productively act as he answers the challenges of survival. If the soldier does not properly focus his angry feelings, he can waste much energy in activities that do little to further either his chances of survival or the chances of those around him. You ready to try, bud? Are you? Well, you got to harness your own situation, man. You can't be wasting other people's energy because you need them to deal with your situation. You can't constantly want other people in your situation because you're so lonely. You don't want to be in a situation by yourself, even though you have something to do with getting yourself in that situation. Now, the new people that meet you got to be in that situation, too. The new people around you got to be involved in a situation that you're victimized in all the time because you have something to do with it because we can never get the whole rap. No one ever wants to be accountable, but you got to face yourself. And I'm charging it up, man. And I'm charging the tribe. Everybody, face yourself, man. Clear your own channels. Harness that energy. Overcome that fear. Overcome the loneliness. Overcome the anger. Overcome the frustration. Tribing up doesn't mean clinging. Now I can cling to things. Now I can cling to a good wave. Oh, look at them. They're surfing a wave. Let me cling to their wave with all my frustrations and anger and fear and anxiety and depression. Let me cling. Let me throw all my baggage into the pure water because I need somewhere to put it. Maybe I could wash it in there. No, you can't use us for that. You can't use us to, you know, throw all your baggage in and, and wash all your stuff. But that's, for, that's for a while. That's for you to face yourself. And when you're ready to not just uh, be half a person, but when you're full, when you're complete, you don't need someone else to complete you. Are you single? I got Ox that's single. We got Aquas that's single. You still got to complete you. Hawa will complete you. You don't need someone else to complete you. You have to find that completion, and that's your situation, and master it and harness it. And, you know, cut out all the irrational flow. If the soldier does not properly focus his angry feelings, if we can't properly focus, because we are soldiers at war, my honey. You on a battlefield, like it or not. 
He can waste much energy in activities that do little to further either his chances of survival or chances of those around him. So it's not just about you, it's about those around you. What do you bring into those around you? Hawa brought you in a fold with with good good people, good flow, good hearted folk. How did you charge them up? At the end of the day, when you look back, you know, did you do more good or more harm based on your energy? Are they better off because they cross paths with you or are they more frustrated and confused and divided? What is your story? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you look back on your path through it, is it destruction or did you really build? Building starts within yourself, man. Building starts within cleansing yourself, man, and not expecting someone else to cleanse you or hear you out. You don't cling to something because you're afraid of dealing with your own stuff. We got to drop the fear. We got to drop the anger, drop the frustration, and drop the anxiety so we can survive <laughs> 2020 and beyond, my love. Hey, man, this is Survival Drop 101. We're kind of drop, man. Surfing the wave and the flow.